Welcome to Attic to Basement Estate Cleanouts with Raccoons and the House of Theme Rooms. I was asked to clear out a house in Riverdale, Maryland, built in 1960 on a main road. When I first walked inside, I was shocked and charmed at the same time. There were six rooms on the main level, two rooms on the second floor, and eight rooms in the basement, which was a walkout basement. The man had been a dentist and his office was in the lower level of the house. I don't think they had any children, at least none that were alive in 2013. The square footage was 2,000 square feet, not big but not little, and the wife made the most of every room. She was the last to die. When we walked in, you first noticed all the clutter. It wasn't trashy, but there were lots of knickknacks, brass items, stained glass lamps, and art everywhere. There were two murals hand-painted on the dining and living room walls. You will see a photo of the peacock mural. Also in one photo, you will see a little of the pond with ducks mural. Someone working with Junk at Dump It, who took care of the trash, liked the pond mural so well, he took a photo of it, and he told me months later that someone was drawing it on his wall at home. On the main floor, there were displays of stuffed dogs, the child's toy kind, not taxidermy dogs, and next to them on the wall were plates with dogs pictured on them. There was a curio cabinet full of angels of all designs, a cupboard full of baskets, and a display table with women's pins that were mostly rhinestone. But the biggest surprise was that upstairs there was a doll room. I mean dolls on the dresser, on the bed, standing on the floor, sitting in chairs. There's a photo I have where one doll on the floor looks like a zombie, although she is dressed in a pretty dress with lovely curled hair. In the lowest level of the house that had been the dentist office, every room had been painted that light green that was popular with dentists and doctor's offices in the 1960s, except for the waiting area for clients that had wood paneling. One room was all Christmas trees, Santas, and decorations. Another room was all kinds of stuffed animals and animal fabrics, except dogs, of course, because their space was upstairs. Another room was crafts. There were rhinestone and fabric and decoupage paper cutouts, glues and scissors and everything else you could think of for kneading on a craft project. You can see some of her handiwork in the photos. This house was so full of interesting objects that it took my helper and I 108 hours to completely empty this house and garage. The garage was where her basket collection was stored and pots. And between the garage and the house, she had plenty of little statues, birdhouses, and wind chimes in the grass and the garden. The next job was in Silver Spring, Maryland in 2013. It was in foreclosure because the woman had a stroke and went into a coma. She had been running a senior assisted living home in the five bedroom house built in 1966. It was a 2,500 square foot home and had two story family room in what I would call the basement level of the house. You could walk out of the family room to a patio. There was also a large bedroom down there too. In the bedroom closet, there were some men's shoes and clothing. The lawyer that hired my company said that the doctors were not sure she was going to recover. And when the attorney was hired, he had to quickly find places for her senior clients to move into immediately. This was mid-December, so not an easy task. It took my helper and I 48 hours to clear out this house. As you will see by the photos, this is not what you might imagine as an assisted living home. The furniture was modern and fancier than other group homes that seniors were placed in that I had been in. The kitchen had wonderful light all day long and there were many living plants that we had to find homes for. They were on counters and the butcher rack. The garage was full of boxes of pots and pans. Supposedly the son had been a cook but had gone to jail in another country for possessing drugs. We finished this job in seven days in December and were finished before Christmas. A bedroom set and a kitchen table were left behind for a relative. In January, I got a call from the realtor who was selling the house, and he asked me if I had been in the house again with my helper or family. I said no, and he said that he came into the house and found a turkey carcass on the kitchen table. 
I asked him why he thought I would be cooking and eating a turkey at that house. And even if I had, why would I leave the food out on the table? My business was to clean up, not leave messes. He was so surprised when he walked in the house and he didn't know what to think. He called the police and they looked around the outside and inside of the house, but they never found anyone. We later heard that the son had got out of jail and came home. Where he disappeared to after his turkey dinner, we don't know. Thank you for watching. Please click like if you found watching this worthwhile and click subscribe if you'd like to get notifications when the next episode comes online. I also appreciate polite comments. Thanks. Goodbye.